Welcome to Smile Radio again. We're back uh, with Bethany Hare without Chris this week. Unfortunately, he's away with his wife and little one on their weekend away, Easter weekend break. Uh, welcome, Bethany. Hello. <laughs> Thank you for having me. No, thanks for coming <laughs> in. So we're going to have a few songs that uh, Bethany sang at the Samantha Sykes Foundation Ball, uh, yep. which you came and you sang and uh, did a fantastic job, by the way. Thank you very much. Uh, and we'll be talking to bethany about uh charity all the work that she does uh stuff that's going on at the minute some really exciting times um so we'll be talking about that hopefully if i can get some water if we can uh, get zoe or <laughs> somebody to bring some drinks down to the studio uh, we might even i might be able to twist her arm and to do a live live song for us so but we'll wait and see i'm not, I'm not going to pressurize her too much but we're gonna. Uh, there's a song that she uh, that you're gonna start off with. It's called "I Wish I Knew How It Would Feel to Be Free." So just tell us a little bit about this song. Um. So there was a charity. I was only. I'm trying to think. 14 at the time, and um, a charity called Children of Peace got in touch and asked me to be their ambassador of music. Um. And they wanted a song to put out there and to tell everyone that I'm the new ambassador of music and to represent the charity. Um. And they wanted a song from the Great American Songbook. So I did some research and I love Nina Simone and she did um, I Wish I Knew How It Would Feel To Be Free. Um, loved it, so I thought I want to put my own twist on it, um, which I love doing with songs and making them my own. So yeah, it's a bit different, so yeah. <laughs> right, well we're back with uh, Bethany and myself, without Chris, live on Smile Radio. Uh, so this is uh, Bethany Hare and I Wish I Knew How It Was To Be Free. We'll be right back after this. Free. 
College Grove Nursery in Wakefield has been providing the highest standard of childcare for over 22 years. Situated on Eastmoor Road, we are close to the M1 and M62 motorway network and also convenient for Wakefield City Centre, schools and major places of employment. For more details, check out our website at www.collegegrovenursery.co.uk or give us a call on 01924 200 120 to arrange a visit. College Grove, a special nursery which takes a hand, opens a mind and touches a heart. So there we are, we're back with Rich and a little bit of Chris, live on Smile Radio, with Bethany Hay, special guest. <laughs> so we've got a few, um, so tell us a little bit about, um, for those who don't know who you are, and I'm surprised they don't, because there's lots of people that I've bumped into throughout the course of the last sort of 12, 18 months, and oh yeah, I know Bethany. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, work, I do some work for a firm of accounts in Leeds, and, okay. and there's uh, somebody who lives over in... Uh, Rawdon, guys, oh, and that yeah, I yeah. think, and uh, they've they've heard of you. Oh, as if, okay. Yeah, so it's not far too too far from you though. Yeah. Anyway, so tell us a little bit how you got into your charity and how long you've been doing it. Okay, it's a long way back. So it started yep. when I was um, I th- nine years old, and I was sat in the conservatory at my granddad's house, and the song "Smile" came on on the radio. I tried to sing along to it, my granddad was like, "You can't sing, just stop. <laughs> I can't sing in tune." So. When someone tells me I can't do something, it always makes me want to do it. So I went away and got a singing teacher. And I was on a model at the time to do extra work. Mm-hmm. So I used that money towards a singing teacher. Um, practiced the song. And then on his birthday, I gave him the sheet music. And then as he unwrapped it, I started singing it to him. And then he started crying. And he Aww. was like, oh, you can sing it. <laughs> um, so that got me into singing. And then we went away to Cumbria two weeks after and the performing arts school that I went to at the time had chosen Martin House um, to do the show for so every year they have a charity and we he had to find a poem to read and then to get people to donate so I got looking for a poem and there was a book from Martin House called The Place to Be which is all the poems that children had mm. wrote that had stayed at Martin House or by the families so I think anyone that reads that would want to do anything they can to help and then when we were in Cumbria said to my dad, I want to do a video to sing Smile. And my dad does filmmaking as a hobby. And he was like, you can't just stand there and sing. It would be boring. And he he was like, I was like, what do I do? And he said, well, why don't you storyboard a little short film? So I got researching, uh, found that Charlie Chaplin composed a song Mm. Smile. And he is famous for his silent films. So I started practicing his walk, (laughs) watched every film and tried to storyboard my own uh, story. So the story was that I had this flower and it was dying. So I tried to get it to catch a sunbeam and I kept missing them. And then eventually I took it to Martin House Children's Hospice and that the sunflower beamed. And yeah, so that was the story just to show how amazing Martin House is. Um, and then it is from an there, amazing child. Yeah, it is. We've got some refreshments coming in. We've got Connor <laughs> sneaking in trying to... Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you, how are you? <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much, CG. My pleasure. Oh, it's an absolute <laughs> Well, you to it. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell we're live, can't you? <laughs> oh, bless him. So, yeah, um, so going back to your, your Charlie Chapman, because didn't you have some problems with that? Yeah, so I said to family and friends, instead of sending a Christmas card, I just put it on Just Giving uh, and said, just donate money to Martin House instead of sending a Christmas card. Um, and then after putting it on, we my mum and dad received an email saying to from the owner of the song Smile in New York, saying to remove the song because of the copyright fees, and they gave it quite a big bill. And then next thing we knew, <laughs> I was coming home from school, and my brother had ran all the way from home to my school to fire me and said, Sky News are on the doorstep. <laughs> so we ended up not going home. He was at my grandma's house <laughs> while she was away. And they were like, you're going to have to go home eventually. They're just going to wait for you, so we thought we need to get it done. My mum was like, just run upstairs. Um, and they, they were really nice about it. And eventually it got through. Sky News said that they're still going to have to publish the story because we didn't want it Yeah. to get anywhere. Because obviously I was only... 10 years old at the time and I was just trying to help Martin House out I didn't intend mm. to get this big copyright bill and things like that and then next thing we know Josephine Chaplin Charles Chapman's daughter got in touch with Sky News and told them to pass on the message that 
um, she's really sorry for what happened and she paid for the copyright bill and then the publisher said we've got four years that we're allowed to use it for and then they've allowed us to use Charlie Chaplin's logo as the image for the charity but I was like what Josephine Chaplin <laughs> which was absolutely mad and wow, it just went global amazing. it was like he had donations flooding in and I think within the space of a few weeks we raised £10,000 and my goal originally was 5000 to run Martin House for half a day mm -hmm. and it just doubled and it went to 10000 and it was mad how quickly it raised and then I just got the book for fundraising so I kept doing um, I did events called Walker Smiles where everyone would dress up to make people smile and then I wanted to help children all around the UK rather than just Martin House and outside of the hospice as well <coughs> uh, so that's when I set up my own charity called Bethany Smile. So that's what I'm doing mo mostly at the moment. So uh, how do how does people get in touch with Bethany Smile then? Um, well, there's a website just www.bethanysmile.org, um, and all the details are on there. But the goal is at the moment to raise three hundred thousand pound to build a cottage where children can go when they've only got a few weeks left to live mm -hmm. because they don't all want to stay in the hospice or no. in the hospital and they can go with their families to build happy memories. So at the moment, it's finding builders, etc. you know, to get on board, which would be amazing. So if you can, we, we'll do whatever we can to help share the love. So Thank if you, if, any, if anybody has uh, wants to donate or contact us, you can email me, richard at smileradio.co or go onto our Facebook page, send me a message, Smile Radio Yorkshire, Instagram and Twitter, Smile Radio 3. So we'll do whatever we can. It's a fantastic cause and I think you're Thank an you. amazing young lady and I said this Thank to you, you before. <laughs> Uh, I'm, a, I'm a great believer that the universe gives back and and you will I honestly think you will get what you you deserve and you deserve lots of lots of um, what's the word I'm looking for I'm thinking it's a superlative that um, every success I don't it's not even it's not enough I, for everything that you've done I genuinely mean that and you came to the ball which is you know the Samantha Sykes for that regular uh, the uh, regular listeners just uh, my show on a Friday they know um, I'm heavily involved with the charity uh, Sammy I knew Sammy all her life Eric and Julie are really good friends of mine and you came and you sang free of charge by the way I have to let everybody know you give your time up free and hey, it's commendable what you do and Thank I'm you. not and I mean it from the bottom of my heart I genuinely mean it you, you're an amazing person Thank so, you I appreciate it and I think this next song I know it's a cover but uh, I think it's just very apt and this is Hero from uh, uh, Ayurigo, Enrique, <laughs> Enrique Inglés, that's it, yeah, his brother. <laughs> so this is Hero, and again, I think this is what you are. Oh, genuinely. thank you. We'll be right back after this. You're listening to Rich without Chris live on Smile Radio. Would you dare? If I asked you to dance Would you run And never look back Would you cry If you saw me crying Would you save my soul tonight Would you tremble if I touch your lips, would you laugh? Oh, please tell me this. Now, would you die for the one you love? Hold me in your arms tonight. Can't kiss away the pain. 
<laughs> Absolutely you. beautiful. Is that what you sung? What did you, you sung Adele a cappella, didn't you? I did Adele, I think, at the ball. It yeah. made you feel my love. Oh my god, I'm not joking. You were there, and <laughs> I had a lump the size of my fist listening to you. Oh, and I'm okay. genuinely, I mean, everybody was there. Uh, and again, you can go to uh, Podbean and or uh, download the podcast from the Samantha Sykes Foundation back in November because we recorded the all evening live. I remember listening to uh, that. And if you listen back, and we had Nazir Asfal, who was a patron of the charity, and he you know, we're on about people on Lakes Facts. And, you know, again, there's nothing wrong with it. It's an opportunity for some to get out there. But, um, yeah, you're doing it the the hard way. To. <laughs> you're doing it the hard way. And you know what? Yeah, it, it'll save you in good stead. Because um, I'm sure you've had knockbacks. I mean, it's not been oh, plain gosh, sailing, yeah. has it, you know? Yeah, there's so, a lot, I think. There's a lot of people out there, like labels, etc. that... And you've got these talent shows that try to show you it. And uh, what's the word? You, it can be really dangerous. They can show you how they want and edit you how they want. So it's just making sure you find the people that believe in you, I mm. think. Do you know, as you as a person, and they'll target you being you rather than trying to make you something else, mm. like a product. Yeah. I think that's easy to be made. In the, I mean, I don't know the industry at all, but I think it's easy to be made a product, if that yeah. makes sense. Well, you know, in, in while we were listening to that song, we were just talking about how difficult the industry is and you know here at smile we are the beacon for unsigned music and artists and and our, i just said to bethany you know, i'd like to be known <laughs> and for the regular listeners a little bit sick of me saying this but i'd love to be known as a modern day john peel <laughs> <laughs> bethany said is it bad or not? i don't know who he is and i said yes <laughs> google it the man was a genius <laughs> but um yeah it, it's it's really difficult and there's like you said there's lots of there's lots of for want of a better word, sharks who yeah. manipulate and, you know, if you if you go back to, you know, like the Bay City Rollers, tell me you've heard of them. Bye, bye, baby, baby, goodbye. You know, heard no. that? <gasps> Bay City Rollers. Right, that's another one. But they they were in the 70s. They were absolutely, you know, as, as well known as the Beatles. And okay. They had a massive following and all of them are skint because of the management yeah. who had all the royalties and because they just left all the the legalities yeah um and for one again and for whatever better way they got shafted big style and they you know even now the royalties to the songs that they sang they don't have yeah and i suppose if did they write the songs because if mm. you're not writing the songs as well i think but again it depends on who's publishing it that's when if yeah. you go back to mccartney and L lennon and mccartney when they were doing a lot of theirs they published and to own the rights oh really okay so that and uh, i think they sold them to michael jackson i forget now for really? about 300 about either 30 or 300 million or oh something my gosh. Okay. um but again if you think over the years from the 60s from to to now how many beatles songs are played yeah so so, so yeah it's, it's really difficult and uh, i think is it stormzy who's not signed by anybody i think he's done is his, he not that's really uh, don't quote me on that but i'm sure he's start i think it's something like that where he refused to go be put on a label and so he's done it all himself i believe so yeah i need to uh, really cool, check my facts out yeah. on that but um so yeah it's it's really difficult it's, it's so hard and and you know i'm a i'm a frustrated musician i can sing two songs on karaoke <laughs> badly great balls of fire and sweet <laughs> caroline that. that, that's that's as good as it gets um and i can't play an instrument of all i'm playing spoons let alone anything else but <laughs> I do appreciate talent and I appreciate how hard it is, you know, even, you know, t to be singing and you were just saying that the, the stuff that you're doing at the moment, uh, you've been in the studio and you've been working with some producers. Yeah. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah. Or can you? Oh, or, no, yeah. <laughs> I, I just jumped in there. I didn't know you. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm working with some amazing producers at the moment called um, Steve Edwards um, and Robin Taylor Firth that you might know from Nightmares on Wax and Olive. 
Awesome. Um, they're both incredible producers, and I'm so lucky because they're so kind as well. Um, and they really believe in me and my voice, etc. And the songs they've written are absolutely amazing, so I just cannot wait to get them out there and for everyone to hear. But no, very excited. So <laughs> will we get a, some, uh, not an exclusive, hopefully, will we get to hear them on Smile Radio? Definitely. When I get them through, I will send them to you. Oh, is that a promise? Is that, a pinky, I, I, that is a promise. Pinky promise. <laughs> well, you heard that. You heard that, everybody. <laughs> So no, it's amazing what you're doing, and it's uh, you know I wish every success. So whilst um, uh, we haven't got my psychic, because normally we've uh, the first hour for those who have been listening, we've been doing um, the featured artists on Smile Radio, and 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 I've played a couple of the tracks from um, BFG. Uh, bear with me, I'm just trying to find them now. Um, it helps if you can spell. Uh, and I was just trying to explain to. Um, there's, well, I, I played Redshift and I played NPC uh, earlier on. Oh, it's gone off now. Bloody neck. Keep talking, Rich. Keep talking. <laughs> um, and, but I wanted to. I just wanted to uh, explain to. Um, here we go. So I'm going to play Complexity Boy, and this is Big Rooster Jeff. I know I played a couple of the songs earlier on, uh, but if you listen again on the podcast you'll be able to listen to the MPC and Redshift. So I know they're getting so much love, but they just did an open gig on, on Saturday at the Up Your Cult record to make sure I said that right. <laughs> um, so I'm going to play a big Rooster, another Big Rooster Jeff uh, song, uh, Complexy Boy. And we'll be right back after this.
<laughs> so we're back with Rich Without Chris, live on Small Radio, with my special guest today, Bethany Hare. Hello. 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 <laughs> so what's your thoughts of the Big Rooster, Jeff? I really like it. It's, so it they, sounds so good. These these boys are the, from Dewsbury, not too far away. Um, okay. So, yeah. and uh, and So what other influences have you got um, that, that, you know... From a from a music point of view, who's been your mm. biggest influence? I'm always weird because all my friends at the moment, their playlists are all modern music, and they'll say, "Beth, put your music on," and then mine's just not modern. <laughs> I, I love all the old classics like Nina Simone, Aretha mm. Franklin. I love James Brown, mm. um, Julie London. I love um, Sam Cooke. Marvin Gaye, like literally all the old. I tell you what, I went to I went to see Marie bought me my wife. She bought me tickets to see Motown the musical. Oh, was it good? Because I love Soul and Motown. Yeah. Yeah, I've got a bit of a wide variety. Yeah, yeah. And and I wasn't sure what to expect if I'm honest. Yeah. Uh, and it it was all about the history of Motown. Okay. Uh, the the label. Um, oh, okay. It wasn't so much. It was how you know the the artists and how mm. they all, um, like it's almost like the stock eight. Stock Aiken and Wat- Waterman, you know, as a producer, yeah. so they had all writers for different. Yes, so yeah. they discovered um, Stevie Wonder, Jackson Five, uh, okay. Diana Ross, yeah. uh, Supremes, um, Marvin Gaye, oh all these. Gosh. Yeah, and it's just the whole story is about how how he he discovered all these different acts and and going through the times of you know when the with the troubles with all the Rachel, riots and yeah. racial, uh, racial yeah. and all the rest of it yeah it were um time of oppression and just how they managed to get through it and what he achieved and yeah. so that it, if you ever get a chance to see it it's brilliant oh, I, no, absolutely I brilliant absolutely brilliant the like music, music yeah the music of that time though i just absolutely love it i know it's i'm biased but i always think that's the best i always say the classics mm, definitely so what other songs so what else have you got going on then? I know you can, what's can you name the songs that you've been recording or not? I can name them, yeah. yeah. Um there's a few. So we've got it's called This Is Not a Love Song. I've got one called The Idea of Love. Um Blackout. There's a few. I'm trying to think off the top of my head. Um, so you're doing a full album then? Yeah. Well the hope is. We've got seven tracks together so far. Brilliant. So just gonna keep recording and adding songs on. I'm trying to write my own songs as well. Mm-hmm. So we've done one so far of my own, which Brilliant. is nerve wracking. But um, it's amazing. I've learned so much because it was when we were over in Madrid, right? And the musicians came and they just did their own interpretation of like the chords that I'd done, and they were just playing over the top. And it was so amazing to watch. And then Robin, the producer, just gets bits you know, he likes from the guitars, etc. And it was just so, I feel like I've learned so much you now from working with everyone. But everyone is so The talented. producers are so clever, aren't they? Oh, gosh, they can yeah. knit, knit it all together. Oh, gosh, yeah. I'm looking, I'm like, how are you doing that? <laughs> it's like um, uh, Will I Am. I just think he's an yeah, amazing producer. He I mean, he's, he's a real techie geek as well. Oh, so. yeah, he is. <laughs> but um, some he's of the cool. stuff, I mean, he's. <laughs> and he's probably on his own admission he's not got the best singing voice but he doesn't really need to does he yeah do you know what I mean he's no he is he's so talented yeah so what else have you got coming up then what's going on with the, in the world of Bethany Hair um, so just finishing off these songs because it's keep going back and forward because we might get a comp and then there might be bits that we've been like oh we'll change that and then redoing the vocal because um, the producers say the more I get to know it and the more I sing it, it might be six months later, it's going to be better than the first month I sang it. Yeah. Because my voice is going to be maturing all the time and I'm going to be getting more familiar with the songs. Um, so we keep going back to recording it, adding backing vocals, etc. Um, and then just trying to get the music out there, really. Um, we've got a few, I can't really say at the moment, but I've got a gig at First Direct Arena. I'm not, I can't really say what it's for no. at the moment. Um, and what? a festival coming up which would be really amazing when it happens. So would we be able to uh, come and see you? Yes, no, definitely. Yeah. Tickets will go on sale soon, but I, it's so confidential know, at the moment. I know. So <laughs> I know what it's like. I know what it's like. It's. I want to tell everyone, but <laughs> I'm just like, you want my mouth shut. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, but um, that is amazing. Oh, gosh, I'm yeah. so pleased for you. When, when I saw that, when you put it on uh, Facebook, I would... You know, and I sent you a message saying, you know, it's, you deserve it. And, uh, you know, and I'm not, again, I'm not trying to blow smoke. It, it, you, you do. And you reap oh, what you sow. You. you really do. And, and I just think if you work hard enough, you will hopefully you'll receive 
you just rewards, you know. So I think I just want it so bad. I think I always I've wanted to do singing since mm. I was young, and it'd be amazing because there's nothing else I enjoy like at school. I mean, I did my A levels, etc., but I didn't really enjoy. There wasn't my passion in mm. anything I did. Where music, it's all I really want to do, and I can't imagine doing anything else. That's why I love I love doing this. I mean, it doesn't yeah. pay me anything, but <laughs> <laughs> but I, I absolutely love it. You know, talking rubbish, lo- <laughs> listening to music. You know, I can yeah. talk. I can talk rubbish with the best of them. So, <laughs> but yeah. Well, what we'll do? We're going to break for a song because uh, we had um, w- we did a gig the other week at the, the live rooms over in Cleck Eaton, uh, and we're going to be there again on the third of May. Uh, I will be posting some more information on facebook and our website about the up and coming event but we're also going to be doing the live fields with the live rooms at Bristol, uh, and again tickets are on sale uh, i think we've sold just about another two thousand tickets oh my gosh, okay. um the plan is to get to about three thousand so they've offered uh, an incentive for everybody who's bought tickets or going to buy tickets there's an opportunity to win a holiday to ibiza or a thousand pound which will be drawn Ooh. on the day <laughs> so this is going to be on the 13th of july so get yourself online check out the go and buy your tickets uh, in the meantime, we are going to be playing uh, at the live rooms over in Clack Eaton, and again, we'll send you some more information. So we did a, we had Elvis Wesley in uh, the other week, uh, and there's <laughs> another another lad, another guy from Dewsbury, and he plays uh, the bass in a band called The Hijacked, uh, and he sent me their album, and it's really really good because, as you know, we are the beacon for all your unsigned music and artists. So this one's called Al Fabio, and this is The Hijacked. Jewelry Bass Lads, this is a tune. We'll be right back with Bethany <laughs> and myself without Chris, live on Smart Radio. <laughs> Do the 
Entirely grateful for everything that you've done for us, so thank you so much. <laughs> no and when you make it, don't forget us, will you? I will <laughs> definitely. <not. laughs> so come on, tell us a little bit about. You've got another. Did you say you're off to another gig in May? Is that art? Yes, it's if anyone wants to book tickets, it's for the Great Ball for Once Upon a Smile uh, in Manchester in Ashton. I think I don't know Manchester, but it's at the Village in Ashton. But it's going to be a great night. They've got a really good lineup. They've got. Um, Leanne from Sweet Female Attitude singing The Flowers, um, the singing dentist. <laughs> <laughs> um, they've got a lot of um, reality TV stars, if anyone's into that. Um, the singing dentist who went viral on Facebook. Um, I'm trying to think who else. And Dubsy, who I think is an, another mm. musician. But no, it'd be a really good night. So yeah, I'm excited for it. <laughs> it should be a good night. So... Where can you get tickets from that then? Is this ticket still on sale or is it? Yeah, if you go on, um, if you just search The Great Ball, they're on Instagram at The Great Ball and on Google, I think you'll find it, it's mm-hmm. in Manchester. And then there should be some a website link for it to book tickets. But yeah, all the money goes to Once Upon a Smile. Are you you performing as well? I am performing. <laughs> can you, are you doing your own stuff or are you going to be? Um, I might do a mix. Yeah. We'll see. Any yeah. new stuff or what you'd be allowed I think so. I'll put a few in there. It's <laughs> nice to get a gist, you know, to see yeah, what people received. will think of it. Because <clears throat> um, it'd be weird, because it'd be like, and get a vibe. So mm-hmm. I'm hoping to do some gigs before the arena with all the new set and stuff, and just get a vibe whether people like it or not. But there's a few venues that I really want to play at mm. before. Just some small music and jazz bars, because I love jazz. Yeah. Um, so it'd be amazing to play there to get a vibe for it. So no, yeah. <laughs> so were you going to be... A cappella, or are you going to be? Um, well, I'm just um, set up a band, a live band. Um, so it's a four piece band. Right. And the musicians are absolutely amazing. Um, again, I've been very lucky in getting there. Um, we've just all found each other, really, from different places. Um, so we've got a drummer, bass guitarist, um, normal guitar, and keys. Mm-hmm. And they're all so incredible. Like they just hear the songs and they're like, right, and they just play it. <laughs> yeah, so that's a gift, isn't it? How they yeah. can just play. Oh no, from definitely. Here, yeah. um, so I'm excited to do gigs with them as well and have people to bounce off and do the music live. It's because the music is literally made at that second on stage rather than a back and track. Everything is made fresh on that yeah. stage for people to hear, and I just think that it's uh, I think it's almost magical. I I love that and love live music. Yeah, we were just saying while uh, the last track we're playing that. Um, this being a live live event, live music, you know, whether you whether you like the actual genre, it's being at a gig, it's just yeah. it's just something. I mean, we go to um we've been for the last couple of years to Carfest, uh, the children uh, need. Yes, yeah. Uh and we've seen I've from I've had the privilege of seeing Bert Bacharach to oh, really? uh the Vamps to the Squeeze. Carfest gets so many. It's amazing. The, I mean, they've two stages in, you know, Rick Astley, Texas, yeah. uh, with uh, George Ezra last year. Oh, really? Okay. Um, and, you know, Madness were playing. And, and my, my little cool. one, she's only 11. <laughs> and um, There's a song which... I, Madness I will, fan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's a massive Madness. And I, in fact, I'll, I'll play a favourite song. Uh, she loves this. Uh, in fact, I'll do that one next. But... Um, so I want to play a song from uh, Elvis Wesley um, about the Great Frontier. But yeah, she's learning so much, and it's not just you know, yeah, Justin Bieber. Everybody's you know, it's not, it's not Michael <laughs> I <love> T. That. <laughs> but you know, it's been able to teach her about you know what I call real yeah. music. You know, yeah. real talent. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I love Bowie. I love oh, you know, gosh, yeah, classics. Um, yeah, classic. You know, Queen. You know, Boy George. When oh, when. Yeah. Uh, he's actually following us on Twitter now. Uh, did you tell you that story? I, I saw it on social media. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we were on about how um, DJs need to get behind new music and give them, you know, not just the corporate, you know. Yeah. And I'm doing inverted brackets, but you know, 
Um, and he just said, plant nothing new, nothing new will grow. So I retweeted and said, yeah, I completely agree. Check out our featured artists. Uh, you know, I wear a smart radio. Oh, yeah, really? The Beacon for Unsigned Music. Uh, and then two minutes later, he's following us. That's you know? really cool. So I keep yeah. tagging him in. And if you're listening, bye, George. You know, get in touch. I've emailed him to say, would you like to do uh, an interview? And, and uh, I've, not oh, heard really? it. I've not heard back yet. So by George, if you're listening, get get in touch. <laughs> you know you want to. <laughs> so yeah, well, um, I'm just going to, I'm going to, I'm going to break for another song and I'm going to play this, this one. Oh, oh, hang on, hang on. You're getting a bit carried away there. <laughs> so this, this, this is my little one. She bought me the Madness CD for Christmas. Okay. Because she, she didn't know who they were. Okay. I had no idea. So... And I'd start, and so she knows baggy trousers. Oh, yes. It must be love. <laughs> and, and this one is a favourite. So we'll be right back after a little bit of madness, shame and scandal, um, live on Smile Radio. <laughs> Me and Bethany, we're coming up. We've only got 15 minutes left, Bethany. It's gone very fast. It whizzes by, doesn't it? But anyway, we'll be right back after a little bit of madness. Who? back we're just busy <laughs> busy gassing away there the, the, talking about different things going on in the music industry and how hard it is, and it is. <laughs> so yeah it's uh, we've just been on about um my little one likes to sing and you know and I try and keep it grounded because <laughs> it is so difficult isn't it Bethany you won't know oh, more than anybody yeah. I mean you started singing what when you were 10 11 like uh 10 years old I think yeah yeah but no, it's such a compact, like so many people are, like you've got so many amazing singers and musicians and they say that there's like a one in a thousand chance of doing that your career while making it mm-hmm. or getting signed. So it's like what makes you that lucky person? Do you know what? It's, yeah. It is a hard industry. Very hard. It'd be amazing though. 
So I'm I'm going to put Bethany on the spot because we're, we're down to sort of the last thirteen <laughs> minutes. <laughs> so would you would you be interested in just doing us a, a little song? Or? I can't really say no, can I? <laughs> well, you can, you can if you want to see a grown man cry. <laughs> um, yeah. What do you want me to sing? Well, I don't know if you'd be up for the acapella. You know the Adele. Yeah, should I do make you feel my love? Okay. Will you be all right? Yeah. yeah do you right? want me to just do a short snippet of it? You can, well, you see how we go. We've okay. got to, we've got 30 minutes. We <laughs> don't want okay. to spit it out too long. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll tell you what we'll do. I'll play I'll play um, Elvis Wesley's uh, song first. Okay. So it gives, gives you a chance to compose Get yourself. A bit of a warm-up. <laughs> <clears throat> mom, mom. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, oh, I'm going to play this. Hang on a second. Just pause it. So this, this, this is Elvis Wesley and he's the bassist out of the hijack. So we'll be right back with Bethany doing... Uh, <laughs> A cappella live. Pressure. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, Beth, but anyway. It's all good practice. It is. It's all good practice. <laughs> so we're right back after Elvis Wesley and it's this I think this one should be the Great Frontier. So we're right back with Bethany's uh, A cappella. <laughs> Having it locked. The 
Bus to Barcelona, it was free of charge. The stars of the past turning in their graves. It's just a room full of calves trying to pull underage girls in the rain. It's bulldozed to make way for a gym. Where the hell are we supposed to go? We'll never see that laser show again. So what do you think to that, Bethany? I really like that. I remember I was singing there when I was younger. <laughs> yeah, Elvis Wesley. He he, he come in. Uh, his, his his proper name is uh, uh, Wesley Johnson, and he's he's um, he's a great entertainer. If you ever get a chance to see the hijacked, uh, they're definitely worth a, uh, a see because they are brilliant live. Um, so talking of live <laughs> leads me. To you, Bethany. Are you are you okay? To, I'm okay. Uh, I don't know what will come out, but let's see. No. So <laughs> the, the reason why, for those listening uh, who don't know, the reason why I've asked Bethany to do this, she sung this in front of nearly, I think, 600 people at the um, Samantha oh, Sykes okay. Foundation at Ellen Road, and you could have heard a pin drop. It was amazing, and okay. and I'm sorry I've put you <laughs> I've put you on the spot. <laughs> I hope I don't disappoint. No, you don't. You 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 could never disappoint me, honestly. Um, so this, I'm going to pass you over to Bethany. This is Bethany singing Adele's Make You Feel My Love. Make You Feel My Love. Take it away. Okay. When the rain is blowing in your face And the whole world is on your case I could offer you a warm embrace to make you feel my love When the evening shadows in the stars appear And there is no one there to dry your tears I could hold you for a million years to make you feel my love I know you haven't made your mind up yet But I will never do you wrong I've known it from the moment that we no doubt in my mind where you belong I can make you happy, make your dreams come true No, there is nothing that I wouldn't do Go to the ends of this earth for you to make you feel my love The storms are raging on the rolling sea And on the highway of regret The winds of change are throwing wild and free you ain't seen nothing like me yet I can make you happy, make your dreams come true No, there is nothing that I wouldn't do Go to the ends of this earth for you to make you feel my love To make you feel my love
<laughs> oh, fantastic. <laughs> Absolutely <you>. brilliant. <laughs> thank you so no much, worries. Bethany. Thank you. Oh, that is amazing. Thank you so much. No worries. Thank you for having me. No. <laughs> well, we're just about to come to the end of our show. And I always like to sort of bring a bit of uh, Markham and Wise into it. <laughs> 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 Bring me sunshine <laughs> in your smile. <laughs> Bring me laughter all the while. Chris hates this because I just sing all over it. And just, Chris, <laughs> I like it was a cover then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <stop laughs> but this what you did. No, <laughs> 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 yeah, I do this uh, <laughs> as amazing. As amazing. <laughs> You sing to every radio, every radio session. <laughs> I do end of each end of each show on a Friday. I do. I sing this to him, and it really winds him up because he's just. I said, well, "Have you not learned the words yet? If Google the words, and he's no, no, you just. I'm redundant. Well, in fact, I've got a new psychic anyway. So all that's left is to say a massive, massive thank you, Beth. Oh, no, thanks thank for you coming for having me. Um, and we're gonna, I'm gonna sign off with uh, a little bit of. Um, the cure from uh, nice. Friday I'm in love so again have a fantastic weekend everybody thank you yeah, thank Bethany. you for having me so um, just want to say have a fantastic rest of the weekend uh, be safe it's got, I think it's going to be nice this weekend it's going to be cracking the flags so put plenty of sunblock on and don't <laughs> forget you know what I'm going to say everybody give us three rings when you get him this is the cure <laughs>